This week, we're looking at a story by the editor of the book. Isaac Asimov wrote Water Clap, and you may recall that he also wrote the story Nightfall. So one um, exercise that we often take in literary studies is to look at different works by the same author and to try and analyze what's similar and what's different. So as you read Water Clap, think about Nightfall. One aspect that is different is Asimov's use of feminism in Waterclap. And so it may seem pretty backward by the 21st century, but it was, you know, reasonably advanced concept to have a female character who actually got to voice her opinion and who actually was quite smart about what was going on in the story. Another similarity that we can see to another story is the idea of terrorism, so that we have a character who is threatening to blow everybody up for his own political and ideological motivation. So that's something to look at, too, is these ideas of even in the future, there's still going to be conflict that will be uh, have the possibility of violence involved in it. So um, that idea of a closed environment where you have a few people and a lot of pressure, not just physical pressure, but also social and emotional pressure, is something that we will be discussing. And Jeff tells me that NASA has, NASA has actually worked on this. So Jeff, tell us about what the real life analog to this might be. Well, one of them is that uh things that he discusses with uh, the Luna Man and the Ocean Man discuss about their funding problems <laughs> is very similar to the way it is. Um, that there's always a certain amount of money available and it has to be divided up and that they have various panels and things to uh, rate the importance of different projects and so haven't um, you served on a panel like uh, that? Many of them, yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's all very realistic and uh, but uh, NASA has Done, used uh, underwater habitations to mimic uh, what living in space would be because both the undersea and uh, the lunar um, uh, habitation both uh, have similar requirements in that the people have to be protected from the outside environment. And so things that they, they learn on the bottom of the ocean or on the moon can be applied uh, to the other planets. Now, in Hop Friend, we have the idea of a friendly alien race that's very different from humans. And so we can use aliens to comment on humanity because we haven't met any aliens. So they're always a creation of us and represent a part of humanity. So it's kind of interesting since we're pretty sure there's no Martians on Mars. Why, um, what are these Martians created for in terms of this writer and his idea of having a Hop Friend? Um, yeah, I mean, lots of people suggest that, you know, the rovers on Mars, that there's aliens, you know, dancing around behind the cameras. And there's a lot of people that look at all the pictures very closely, and some of them think they see aliens and things. They want weird to things. see them. Right. Um, but as far as we know, there's no, uh, what we call megafauna living on Mars. Um, we're still looking to see if there could be bacteria or, in fact, uh, today or bacteria lived on Mars in the distant past because we know that Mars was um, a very different in the past in that it had a, a thick atmosphere and liquid water and oceans uh, rivers and uh, in the early part of its life and it was much warmer and so uh, life could have certainly developed during that time but then the uh, atmosphere was lost it got very cold and the other thing that's not really realistic in this story is that uh, the humans can go outside and actually breathe. So unless they've done some terraforming and added some oxygen to the atmosphere of Mars, uh, that would not be possible today. But we can still read about it and enjoy reading a story that allows us to imagine something that could never be true. I like the Martians. It's a good story. <laughs>